Hey guys, Hitman89 here. I hope you're doing great. And today I'm gonna show you the best strategy games to play in 2023. Next, we'll have the best RPGs. So please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Now let's kick things off with Dune Spice Wars. This game has been in early access for about a year now and is getting a full release later this year. And whether you're a fan of the original Dune game or maybe the movie or simply love strategy games, Dune Spice Wars is definitely worth checking out. It's got 5 unique factions to choose from, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, and it's also got agents that you can use to assassinate or sabotage your enemies so you can get all that spice. You gotta watch out though, cause moving too many units to a small area attracts the dreaded sandworm, which will eat their asses in no time. So if you haven't played Dune Spice Wars yet and you like what you see, you should consider giving it a shot. Keep in mind, like I said, it's still an early access, so you may face a few bugs here and there and some balancing issues as well, but the game is pretty fun to play and it gets addictive real quick. Speaking of addictive, let me show you the second game on my list. If you're looking for an old school real-time strategy game, then Age of Empires 4 is exactly what you need. It came out a couple of years ago on PC, but the reason I'm recommending it to you guys today is because it's finally coming to Xbox later this year, which I think is awesome. But the pathfinding and AI are still terrible. You could get invaded, have your buildings destroyed, your villagers killed, your resources stolen, and your soldiers would be just standing there, chilling two feet away like the pieces of shit they are, waiting for you to tell them whether they should do something about it or not. <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the third game on my list, The Settlers New Allies. Now I'm just fucking with you, it has pretty much nothing to do with The Settlers and it feels like a mobile game. So, instead, we're gonna be looking at Humankind, a civilization-like game where you start with a bunch of primitive hunter-gatherers and you gotta collect enough food to survive and evolve. In my opinion, what makes this game dope is that every time you start a new era, you can completely switch your civilization's culture. Plus, each game lasts an eternity, so if you're looking for a good strategy game to dive into and that'll keep you busy for the rest of your life, Humankind could be it. It's also incredibly replayable and even though the combat system is a little too simplistic, it's still much more interactive than civilizations. By the way, make sure you manage your cities properly before you expand a little too fast and end up with rioting and starving cities everywhere. That's basically what happened to me. Anyway, at number 4 we have a completely different type of game. 17 years after the first Knights of Honor game, we finally get a sequel. Although it feels more like a remake, so if you love the first game, you'll most likely love this one too. But for those of you who are new to Knights of Honor, it plays like a tabletop strategy game and during battles, it allows you to control your army, just like a Total War game. Except this one goes deeper, <laughs> while remaining more accessible than let's say Crusader Kings 3. Oh, and if you don't want to end up losing quickly like I did, don't let anyone drag you into their conflicts. Cause I was chilling, making some money and planning my moves carefully, and then the Pope declared the crusade. So I built an army to help take Jerusalem. In the meantime, the Romans sent a big ass army, so instead I pillaged Damascus thinking my allies would protect me. But the second they took Jerusalem, those motherfuckers packed their shit and left me there to die. Anyway, let's move on to a game I can actually handle, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. What sets this game apart from let's say 99.99% .99 of all the other strategy games out there is that it mixes real-time strategy with RPG elements. So on Mountain Blade 2 you can found your own kingdom, lead your troops to victory and control your character in battles but also when visiting towns, talking to NPCs or even when having sex with your wife. The last part is obviously not true, but you can marry any bitch you want as long as you're okay with them being ugly as fuck. <laughs> Seriously, finding a good looking lady in this game is harder than taking castles, which you can do in both third person and first person view. Plus there is an insane amount of activities to do here, so it never really gets boring. Needless to say, I played the shit out of Mountain Blade 2 on PC since its early access phase, and now that it's on Game Pass, I started a new campaign on Xbox Series X and I'm having a blast. Now let me show you guys and girls an underrated game. The Last Haven puts you in charge of a group of survivors trying to make it through the apocalypse. 
We're talking about waves of raiders and mutated monsters here, so if you don't build your shelter properly and send your scouts to scavenge for supplies every now and then, you can just lay back and enjoy watching your survivors get mauled by mutated wolves. In all seriousness though, The Last Haven sells for less than 20 bucks. Optimization wise, it's not bad at all, so even if you have an old ass PC like mine, you'll still be able to run this game just fine, so maybe give it a shot. But if you're not interested, then maybe you should take a look at this game. The Valiant is a squad-based, real-time strategy game made by the guys behind Sudden Strike. You play as a crusader and it's pretty straightforward, so even if you're new to the genre, it'll only take you a few minutes to get the hang of it. The voice acting and music are great, but the sound effects are just lame. On the other hand, the campaign is really interesting, and that's coming from the guy who tends to just play skirmish mode. Let me know if you're like me. Oh, and at the moment of making this video, The Valiant is only available on PC, but it's coming to PlayStation and Xbox sometime this year, so if you like what you see, make sure you grab the game for cheap, because I honestly wouldn't spend more than 25 bucks on this one. Alright, let's talk about the next game. Old World released on Steam last year, and it just received a new DLC called The Sacred and the Profane, plus a lot playing this forex game and I found it quite unique. That's why I decided to put it on my list. As the name suggests, Old World is set in a historical context, so no matter how long you play it, you won't reach a modern day era. On this game, time flies by quickly, each turn represents a year, and people have realistic lifespans. So don't get attached to your leader too much, cause that motherfucker will die in no time. But that's not really a big deal, cause on this game, always having a great successor ready to take over when the time comes is what's gonna keep your nation on top. I didn't know that when I first started playing Old World and I didn't really focus on educating my son, so I had to play as a loser for like 30 turns until that bitch finally died and his uncle took over. <laughs> Apart from managing your kids and family, you'll be building cities, exploring the world with your scouts and interacting with other nations. Speaking of which, every decision matters on this game, no matter how insignificant it may seem. Cause yeah, there are tons of randomly generated events that you're gonna have to deal with, and if you're not careful enough, it'll only take you a couple of turns to realize you fucked up big time. Now, if you're into World War II strategy games, then you should definitely check out the ninth game on my list. A whole decade later, we're finally getting Company of Heroes 3. It's bigger and better, with a sandbox style single player campaign that focuses on the Mediterranean region, which is where I live. I mean, most of you probably don't know this, but I'm from Tunisia. Anyway, this game's got heavily improved destructible environments and stunning graphics. But you're gonna need a decent computer if you wanna play Company of Heroes 3 in optimal conditions. Or you could just wait for the console version if you have a PS5 or a Series X. Last but not least, we're gonna be looking at Farthest Frontier. At the moment of making this video, Farthest Frontier is still in early access, but by the time most people find out about my shitty channel, I think the final version of the game is gonna be out. So Farthest Frontier lets you build a town in the middle of the wilderness. You'll have to harvest materials, hunt and farm to make sure your people survive. Oh and the game takes place in the middle ages, and back then there were no fridges. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button for more useless facts like this one. <laughs> for real though, since food goes bad after some time, you can't just keep on harvesting it and storing it mindlessly or your population will end up starving to death. I don't know about you guys, but I think unique challenges like this make Farthest Frontier interesting and different than most city builders and survival games. I think even in its current state, it's definitely an excellent game to play while waiting for Manor Lords. Oh, and before I let you guys go, here are a few honorable mentions. Spellforce 3 Reforced has its gameplay divided into two parts. The real-time strategy part where you build and manage your base, gather resources, train and control your army, and the role-playing part where you use your hero to explore the world, interact with NPCs and level up. Another game I think is worth having is Anno 1800. I loved playing it back when it first came out on PC and now that it's finally coming to consoles, I might play it again. Now for those of you who are Warhammer fans, you probably already played Total War Warhammer 3, but if you haven't and you like massive battles with tons of epic creatures, then you should probably get it when it's on sale. But if you're not really into commanding huge armies and you'd rather manage relationships, resolve complex diplomatic issues and have sex with your cousins, then Crusader Kings is what you need. 
<laughs> and that's gonna be it for the best strategy games you should play right now. I did my best to pick all kinds of games out of the ones we had this year and last year. So if this video helped you find a couple of good games to play, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Like I said, we're gonna be having the best RPGs next, so stay tuned. I upload every two weeks, so in the meantime, maybe check out some of my previous videos and see if you like them. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon. For the pay stub or your pay up Don't make love to the game, bruh Fuck the game up Change up, rearrange stuff To your greatness Famous for the way up Play the game, bruh